Hey guys, my name is Tribal Instincts and I have been sent some pretty cool things over the past month or so. I've got a couple more in today, so today we're gonna unbox these and I'm gonna go in depth in something I got a few weeks ago. So first, let's unbox the new toys. All right, let's take a look at the little guy first. I've torn off the packing label, so you know, it looked better than this a few minutes ago. But let's, let's get in here. All right, so these are a set of Vive controller pads. These things are supposed to protect you people that can't seem to hold on to them, or for the people that don't have, you know, higher ceilings. What do we got here? We got a couple seemingly high quality straps with the Mammut label on it. And then we have the rubber protectors for the controllers. Nice, high quality. I used to uh, work in retail sales where I sold phones all day, including the OtterBox cases, and this feels very similar to that quality rubber. So this will definitely, definitely take an impact. Same thing there. Mammut VR Protection Kit. All right, now this is not a review of these yet. I only just got it. I'm not about to give you guys a review without actually putting this thing through its paces, but just to show you what it looks like with it on. It does look like it keeps most of the sensors fairly well unobstructed. However, it definitely cuts away on the angle possibilities that it can uh, you know, get good tracking. So that is potentially a deal breaker for this thing, depending on how the tracking goes. So no comments yet on how the tracking is. I haven't tried it yet, but expect a video within the next couple of weeks after I've had an opportunity to put this thing through its paces. And I gotta figure out some way of testing this without risking one of my controllers. We'll see, I'll work on something. All right, now this thing is hot off the press. This is a 3D printed replacement, or uh, I guess augmentation to the existing Vive strap. This thing is supposed to make it super comfortable while also making it to where it can be like lifted up. And man, that is, that is, that is the largest 3D printed anything I've ever held in my hands. That is, that is, that is a lot of a lot of plastic to have been printed. So that is that's pretty cool. We got some memory foam on the inside. Very nice, comfortable. Uh, definitely, you're going to want to cover this to keep my sweat from going all inside of it. But this will be interesting. We'll see how this thing works. I'm going to give this. I'm going to run this thing through its paces. Make sure that this thing is comfortable. Make sure that it actually works the way it's expected, uh, and make sure that it doesn't fall apart on me after a week. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know once I have some more information on it. All right, now we get to the meat of this video. Several months ago, I teased about this. This is a 3D printed Vive controller mount slash charger. And while this is very good, it does have some problems. Before I even had a chance to message the creator about them, he already went back to me and said, hold on to this, don't do a review, I can keep it, but don't do a review, because he was going back and he was redesigning the whole thing. So that the, that's what this review is about. It is about the updated version of this thing. All right, so the biggest complaint that I had with this is that it was so difficult to get the Vive controller in and out with one hand. Now, it's, it, I mean, it wasn't impossible. It, it, all it took was a little bit of double-sided tape, but you can see, like, I mean, it, it stuck on there really good. So some double-sided tape, like I said, it was enough to make it to where, you know, the bottom would stick, but still, it wasn't great, and you kind of had to seat it in there just right to get it to charge. So really, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of the guy for, you know, saying, stop uh, and he went back and actually made a good product because this I would not have been able to review well. This one on the other hand as you already saw getting it off is incredibly easy getting it in is just as easy. All right, so let's go through the pros and cons of this thing. So the pro, obviously, it makes it incredibly simple for you to plug in and charge your controllers. That is the main benefit. It also keeps them from just lying around and being cluttered and just overall just being a mess. Now, I mean, while it's not art, it's not the most beautiful thing, it is a heck of a lot better than them just lying on a table somewhere. So the ability for you to, with one single hand, just reach up and grab them and immediately start going into them, and whenever you're done, just plop them back in there and not have to worry about if you forgot to charge them or not, because that's just where you put the controllers, that makes these things very, very, very handy. 
I don't know how many times I've gotten through with the Vive, have been sweating my rear off with something like Hollow Point or something, and I drop the controllers and I walk away, and I come back to record a video the next day or show somebody the Vive, and the controllers are dead. So that has happened regularly. These, I don't have to worry about it because it is not a pain for me to just put them back on the, on the chargers. All right, that's it for the pros. I mean, there's really not much I can say negatively about it because there's really only one real function that this thing does, and it is to charge your controller, and it does that. Uh, so that's it with the list of the pros. Uh, going on to what I don't like or what I would wish was slightly better about it. All right, so nine times out of ten, okay, like seven times out of ten, whenever I go to put in a controller, it just it charges instantly, right? It, there's no issue. I don't have to worry about shaking it around. But every now and again, I can seat this in there where the magnetic bottom doesn't quite come in contact and it doesn't quite charge it. And I don't even know if I'll be able to reproduce it. Uh, but just every now and again. Uh, yeah, that one was too obvious. But anyway, never, every now and again, even though if I can't show it here, uh, it doesn't always charge. So I do have to watch for the light. So it's not perfect. It, it would be amazing if, if it had some sort of like audible sound, like a beep whenever it went actually onto the charger. The Vive controllers don't beep on their own. So it'd be really nice if the, if the actual base made some sort of noise to tell you that, hey, I've made connection. But that would up the cost by a lot. So, eh. The only other thing I can really say about these things, and it's really not so much a negative or it's not even a positive, it's just like the look of them is just kind of bland. Like there, there's nothing, there's nothing beautiful about it, but then again, there's nothing truly ugly about it. My wife or you know other people may disagree on either side of that, but it's it's not the most attractive thing. So you're not gonna be able to set this thing out, you know, in the middle of your house and say, ooh, look at my Vive controllers there. But it definitely makes it better than having just the Vive controllers sitting on a table somewhere or the dozens of other, you know custom mounting solutions that I've seen that some of them are fantastic, but a lot of them are just sort of slapped together. So this definitely solves the problem of charging, if that's even a problem for you, uh, and it also helps keep the controllers all nice and neat, but it, it's not gonna win any like artistic awards, right? Since I usually prefer function over form though, I don't really mind. This thing, it looks more than good enough for what I use it for, and but then again, mine is kind of like up in the sort of cave above my garage, so I'm not really, entertaining too many people. All right, so lastly, price. These things are roughly 43 bucks USD. That's pretty steep. I mean, that, that, is, that is pretty steep. I, I, would, I would honestly say that for me personally, like up in my cave, I don't know that I would probably say that 43 bucks is worth it for this. However, if I were to have these out in a more displayed area, if this was like in or near a living room where people were gonna be seeing it, then yes, this would be a significant improvement and it would generally just make the entire Vive setup look much less you know, slapped together as, as most of them do. With all the Vive wires and everything else, this would help clean things up significantly. Uh, so if it was in there, my opinion might be different. 43 bucks though, that is a tough pill to swallow. I, I, I cannot say that, that it would be worth it for me, but it comes really, really close. I would put these, at 25 bucks I wouldn't blink an eye. All right, so I mean, that's, that's kind of where I'm putting it. 30 bucks, you're kind of pushing it, but 40, I would probably say, eh, probably not. And I know that's, you know, that's, that's only 10 bucks difference, but I don't know, that's just sort of how my mind works on these things, it's just, it, it's it's not it, it's it's great. The product is fantastic. He's done a fantastic job of what this is. But I'm not sure that it is a forty dollar you know investment for 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 what it offers, which is just helping me out and charge it. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. That is my opinion on the VR MagDocs. If you're at all interested, go to vrmagdocs.com and check them out there. I, I very much support this guy. Okay, he has made a and a tremendous product here. It is incredibly well polished. I love what it what it does. I just don't know if it's worth the, you know, the, the benefit to me. However, I do definitely support his effort. And like, I don't know if you guys know this, but these are like homemade labors of love from this guy. So I understand why the price point is the way it is, which if you don't know, like 3D printing this is not just like clicking a button, waiting for the print and then shipping it off to somebody. There is a huge amount of effort that goes into this after the print is done in order to make this a viable product for you to actually use. So I understand why the price is the way it is. It's just, it's just, it's, it's to each their own on, on if it's something that they can actually afford and if it's worth it in their own home. So check it out. If you like this video, guys, hit the like button below. If you didn't, hit the downvote button and tell me why. And hit subscribe if you want to see more, all right? And then in the future videos, I'm going to be going in depth on those other products that I unboxed with a freaking sword. Why I unboxed it with a sword is, is I mean, it's actually pretty simple, really. Uh, my wife got this for me for my 12th anniversary or our 12th anniversary, and I love it. it it's a sword. I mean, of course, everybody loves swords, right? Uh, but I don't really have too many uses for it. 
Um, I mean, home defense is uh, all well and good, but you know, until I have the opportunity or the requirement uh, to charge a guy with a sword, I might as well put it to use in unboxing, you know, Vive accessories, right? Why not? There, there, there are worse ways to open up a box. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>